guys, Elle here. It's kind of weird, you know? I don't have a bunch of decks in front of me while I'm filming right now. I do have one deck in front of me. My doodle paper wrote with Smith. Oh, that's because sometimes you just, you just gotta shuffle, right? <laughs> just need to. Um, uh, but yeah, I don't have a bunch of decks in front of me right now because what I want to share with you guys is some of my favorite tarot books today. They're like my favorite esoteric tarot books. They're all... You know, I mean, they're all about, like, the, the oh my god, how do you describe the esoteric? <laughs> Basically, if you want to read more about the kinds of things that I really talk a lot about on this channel, uh, these would be some good recommendations for you. Some of them are a bit more obscure, even, not really talked about very much, but they're amazing. Every single one of the books I'm about to list here are, like, game changers. They're, like, life-changingly awesome books. Life-changingly awesome. <laughs> I'm really just gonna like touch on each one and tell you a little bit about it and why I love it so much. Uh, the only thing that I have not included amongst these books are, are things like this. Uh, you know, authors that I talk a lot about, I'm sure, like Worth and Pappas and Levy and Christian and, and all those awesome tarot authors of old. Uh, I haven't included anything like really, really old here. I don't think there's even anything before like 1960 maybe um, because they can be hard to understand you know I, all my favorite books I mean these are all some of my favorites it's, it's the ideas in them that I love um, but all the books that I'm about to share with you are also you know modern they're they're written in they're written well and and easy to understand and and it makes you like you can fly through them like that I think you know, each one of these books I did, it was like one of those experiences where you just cannot put it down. Like, rah, it's like dumb. Uh, I know that I've mentioned lots of other books on this channel at different times that um, I, I really, really enjoy as well that aren't historic books like uh, Hodorowsky's uh, The Way of Tarot and, and whatever else. Um, that is certainly a favorite of mine, but I wouldn't necessarily categorize it as a, a truly esoteric work. Uh, or focusing on the esoteric tarot. Uh, it, it goes there, it certainly does at times. Uh, these books just have a different way of exploring that subject, like that's the subject unto itself, more or less. Okay, I could have, I didn't know where to start. There's, they're not really in any particular order. Uh, but this is the first one I want to mention here. This is called Origins of the Tarot by Di Leon. Can you see that? Cosmic Evolution and the Principles of Immortality. That's right. This book exists, folks. I do not hear too many people talking about it, but it is an amazing, amazing book. <laughs> so this book, like a lot of my favorite books, actually sort of weaves together all the different esoteric traditions, all these different spiritual traditions from all around the world. It's east, east meets west, north meets south. But it talks about all the all the traditions from which the tarot comes, all the esoteric traditions. Uh, so you will cover things like Sufism, uh, yogic disciplines, Buddhism, uh, Western esotericism and hermeticism, alchemy, um, esoteric Christianity. Like, Everything. It's it's wonderful. It's it's a beautiful way to look uh, at the tarot because the tarot does express uh, and encompass all of these ideas. So it covers you know universal wisdom and, and initiation, realization, uh, and like cosmological unfoldment, the creation of the world uh, in a in a very very obviously very detailed way. It's a very thick book which is just wonderful. Uh, one of the things I love about this book is on like almost every page, really, there's, can you see that? I think that's the hanged man. Uh, there's these little tear images and they all come from these uh, uh, old set of cards from a sheet called the uh, the Budapest or the Budapest, Budapest Metropolitan Sheet. Blah, blah. Uh, it's not the only pictures in here, but Actually, under each one of those is like a really awesome little bit of info. Under the hangman it says here, aware of psychic manipulations, you forestall the quest from being stopped by any power other than that of the transcendental, nor will it be arrested by any effort attempting to override your true Tao. This book is good, you guys. It's really good. 
Uh, at the beginning of each chapter, too, there's some pictures. No, I can't find any. <laughs> Here's one. There's some great images of some really awesome old decks. Uh, I think those are both Cariel Viscontis. Yeah. And it's not just uh, Visconti decks, though. There's also some images of the Charles VI deck and... Oh, there's one. Yeah, and the, and the Desti deck. Some cool images of, of old decks in here and old cards. Anyway, author Di Leon explores a, a confluence of philosophical schools from East and West as they relate to the tarot, giving each its due in the exposition of a universal procession of evolution and the soul's quest for enlightenment. In the process, the tarot is seen as a unique exemplification of perennial teachings on the soul and its liberation as well as a still unfolding window into concealed currents of human history. The book's profound learning and unprecedented range of references are sure to attract close study among students, both of the world's most enduring esoteric tradition and of esotericism itself. Boom! Origins of the Tarot. Check it out. I don't think any of these books are particularly hard to find. Um, a bunch of them are out of print, but can be bought like secondhand or through a third-party seller on Amazon or something like that. Uh, let's do this guy next because actually it is really rather similar in a lot of ways to the book we just talked about, Origins of the Tarot. Uh, and that is, of course, Meditations on the Tarot. So here again, another ginormous, awesome tome. <laughs> uh, this one was written anonymously and published after the author's death uh, upon his wishes. Uh, the book is separated into 22 sections. Each one is written uh, like a letter to the reader uh, about each arcana. And it does a lot of what the other book does. It explores all of, it, it really it utilizes all the world's teachings and, and perennial philosophies, if you will, uh, to further explore the tarot. And it goes deep and it's a honest, truthful, penetrating read. It's it's really quite good. Another favorite. In general, this book, all these books, and the tarot is talking about the, the spirit's evolution, the soul's longing for wisdom and longing for reunion with with the one, with with divinity. And and the evolution and involution you could say of of us spiritually, um, our journey, our hero's journey, you know, that's the kind of stuff that, um, that I like to read about. <laughs> uh, I think this book is even listed as one of the spiritual classics of the century, uh, but it really, it's a cool way to explore these Christian ideas, but they're, they're deeper hermetic meanings, uh, and he does this uh, through by talking about it in the light of like Kabbalistic ideas and um, Buddhist ideas and Hindu ideas and a lot of Jungian concepts and you know that's how that's how I like to learn you know uh, show me that they're all the same and how this one understands it and how this one explains it and all of a sudden it all comes together and you're like I can look at any mystery school, any world religion now, and see the common threads. Uh, and, and the same is true of the tarot. It's just, it's another mystery school, mystery tradition. Uh, yeah, good book. Okay, my next book is Tarot Revelations. I've mentioned this on the channel before. It is by Joseph Campbell, and get the light out of there, Richard Roberts. Joseph Campbell, however, does only do the first 20 pages, and it's a wonderful read, as everything that Joseph Campbell has ever written is amazing and wonderful. Uh, but do not discount the rest of this book. This is an amazing fucking book. Oh my God, it's so good. Uh, basically, he sort of more or less runs through the entire Major Arcana about three times. The first time there is a slant on understanding things numerologically, the second time mm, alchemically, and the third time sort of astrologically. Uh, and it's not just this card means this, this card means this. He explains 
explores the alchemical process and how numbers relate to each other in an incredibly accessible way. This book is mind-blowing. Uh, now, while Joseph Campbell in this book fo focuses on the Tarot de Marseille, uh, the rest of the book, the bulk of the book that Richard Roberts, <laughs> Richard Roberts has written, is uh, dealing with the Rider Waite Smith tarot specifically, uh, with Ill, its wonderful alchemical symbolism. Real quick, I do want to mention Richard Roberts has another book have has a, another book that came out before this that relates to the tarot. Uh, it came out, Jesus, when did this come out? I think in the seventies. Yeah, like 75 or something. Uh, now, I'm not really including this in my esoteric tarot book recommendations, but I did want to mention it because it's a little bit of tarot history. Uh, it even says it on the cover here, but it's the first book of taped, recorded tarot card readings called Tarot and You, and that's by Richard Roberts also. Um, I do just want to warn you, I don't think there's anything in this book like that, but in this book, for sure, in at least one place, uh, he talks about how if you're like homosexual, you kind of need a doctor because you have a sickness, like there's something wrong with you. Um, but I just chuck it up to it is a symptom of the times in which this book was written. Uh, but fair warning. Other than that, it really is uh, another really fascinating read. Um, really one of the things that happens when you explore alchemy, right, just in general, is unless you're just reading like specific alchemical texts that are really old, uh, at least I know I've come across this a lot, when I read current books on alchemy, it, they almost always reference Carl Jung and it becomes this comparison of alchemical processes and, and psychologic, psychological ideas. So Richard Roberts in talking a lot about alchemy discusses psychology a great great deal especially from Jung's point of view because Jung really loved alchemy and stuff too right he never specifically wrote about the tarot I don't believe but if you read the works of Carl Jung uh, you know everything relates to the tarot in that it is expressing these alchemical ideas which which really are the same ideas that you find in every in every mystery tradition Anyway, I got off track. Um, the spreads that he uses in here are very Jungian-based. And of course he talks about psychology and alchemy in this book too. But yeah, they're really interesting tarot readings and it's a historic moment in tarot history in that it was the first book of like readings like this. Uh, so interesting to look at. It's a good read, especially tarot revelations. Oh my God, it's revelatory. Uh, this one definitely is out of print, but I see it on Amazon all the time. Okay, since we are talking about alchemy, uh, my next recommendation is Alchemy and the Tarot by Robert M. Place, of course. I think you can buy this on his website right now. You don't have to hunt around for this book anymore. Um, but it's a fantastic book. It is actually one of two, yeah, one of just two books up here that actually is sort of designed to go with uh, an actual physical deck, but you do not need the alchemical tarot if you don't like it, you don't need it, or you can't afford it, <laughs> just get the book. Like, it's, it's a wonderful book unto itself. It talks just like Tarot Revelations about how the alchemical processes, uh, you know, platonism and all sorts of other esoteric ideas too, but mostly focuses on, on the, on, uh, on alchemical concepts and ideas and how they're expressed through the tarot. Um, you know, he relates, uh, he relates certain groupings of trumps to, to each stage of the alchemical process. And he even talks about, um, you know, how all these beautiful old alchemical, I can't see the camera. <laughs> Sort of. But anyway, he talks about how a lot of these alchemical images and alchemical imagery are really the, the basis, uh, the foundation, the source of the tarot imagery and artwork that we, that we know and love, even on historic decks, the Tarot de Marseille. Um, you know, that woman and a lion on the, on the strength card is, is classic alchemical depictions. Uh, that's why I love the tarot the Holy Light so much and Robert in Place's Alchemical Tarot uh, because you, you see where those things sort of came from. It's, it's really fun.
So in both of these, the, this book and the one I mentioned before, you end up talking about some really awesome stuff. You talk about the the stairway of planets or the ladder of planets, the stages of the alchemical process, Rosicrucianism. Um, the history of tarot is gone over in this one. Uh, all the different processes represented by the cards. And in the back of Robert M. Place's book here, he even goes... Uh, goes through and has a section on each and every single card. Here's all the majors and then a little bit on the minors. So in this book you even get some uh, some good divinatory stuff even for actually using the tarot. And now while that's not the focus of most of the books I'm listing here, uh, I really gotta say that studying deeply, you know, the messages and the meaning of the imagery and the tarot cards, uh, even if they're not specifically telling you this means this and this means this in a reading, understanding their their nature and their deeper or more spiritual or more esoteric meaning will only help in your understanding of the card on whole, so it'll help in your tarot readings. Um, plus, it's just fascinating. Uh, Robert M. Place, of course, has written lots of other books. This is another great one, History... Oh, what's it called? <laughs> the Tarot, History, Symbolism, and Divination, Robert M. Place. Uh, it's a great overview of sort of everything tarot, including tarot meanings. It goes through all the Red Weed Smith cards in the back and stuff. Uh, it's not super detailed in any of the things that it actually talks about, but it's a, it's a wonderful overview of just tarot itself. That is more or less uh, the, the hard copy books that I have, actually. Next up on the list, I used to have a hard copy of this. I don't anymore, and it still hurts oh so much inside that I don't have a physical copy of this. <laughs> um, oh, that makes me go so red when I show you guys my tablet. But anyway, Tarot of the Holy Light, Volume 1, uh, A Continental Esoteric Tarot. This is the book that goes with Tarot of the Holy Light, the deck, uh, deck and book by Christine Payne Towler and Michael Dowers. Uh, now, Christine Payne Towler, I am pretty much just gonna lump every single thing she's ever written uh, <laughs> in right here, right now. Um, this this book is mind-blowingly amazing. You do not have to have the deck to find uh, to, to find value and, and meaning and, and important things in this book. Here too, very much, you will find a, a synthesis, a, a wonderful way of explaining things from all different places. Uh, you know, she mainly focuses on uh, European esotericism, you know, your Gnostics, your Rosicrucians, your Martinists, your Theosophists. Uh, but, but all those wonderful ideas are, are expressed so beautifully through the tarot and she hones in on, on all these things in such a fascinating way. Um, and she understands that, that all these older, like, Atella meanings and things are really, you know, veiled esoterica also, uh, and that their meaning ha comes from somewhere, and she shows you where that comes from. Uh, written well, easy to understand, all of her writings, all of her essays, you can find all sorts of other <clears throat> amazing things that she's written on her website. I'll definitely put a link below. Uh, Terra University, it's called, Arc Letters, check it out. So that is volume one. You can also download the app, actually, for just a few bucks that goes with the deck that has most of the book in it. Since it is a companion book at the same time as being a fucking amazing book, period, uh, it, it will go through each and every one of the tarot cards, full explanation, all the correspondences that she's so famous for, <laughs> for discussing and um, elaborating on. You know, her, her al astro alphanumeric correspondences, her astrological and numerical, uh, and her alphabetic correspondences, like the Hebrew correspondences, uh, are all discussed. They are also discussed uh, in this book, as well as some history and uh, all the different ways of, of associating things throughout history with all the different decks. Uh, in the underground, in the underground scream, esoteric tarot revealed by Christine Payne Towler. Uh, well, it definitely focuses more, a bit more on on history as opposed to discussing esoteric truths and how they relate to the tarot. Uh, it's still this one's a, a fantastic read if you are interested in comparing 
uh, different associations, the English school, the French school, Levy, uh, Crowley, Waite, uh, and, and finding your own. Your own astrologic correspondences and associations. Look, I get so excited just looking back through this book. It's so wonderful. Uh, also, by the way, Foundations of the Esoteric Traditions, which is Terror of the Holy Light, Volume 2, uh, is written and should be out soon. Uh, I got to read a proof of it, and it is, like, it's up there. Like, it's right up there with Terror of the Holy Light, Volume 1, and Terror Revelations, in that, especially if you haven't been exposed to a lot of this stuff before, it's, it's just good. <laughs> that's that's my ringtone. <laughs> that's my Doctor Who ringtone. <laughs> okay, to recap real quick, number one was, these are in no particular order, but number one was Origins of the Tarot by Dai Leon. I'll write them down below, because I'm sure I'm not pronouncing names right. Meditations on the Tarot by Anonymous. Tarot Revelations, mostly by Richard Roberts. Uh, Alchemy and the Tarot by Robert M. Place, and Christine Payne Towler's Everything, but especially um, The Tarot of the Holy Light, Volume 1. Now, I do have a couple of runner-ups that I want to mention briefly, one of which is Elizabeth Hayes's The Wisdom of the Tarot, sometimes just published as The Tarot or Tarot. Uh, this is a German edition that I have that I bought because it came with an amazing set of, can you see that? Oswald Worth cards! Uh, and that's what is used uh, throughout the book. That's what she talks about. She uses the Worth deck, the Major Arcana, and she walks you through the Major Arcana uh, in an esoteric soul's journey, hero's journey, soul's redemption, ascend the mountain kind of way. Uh, but it's, you know, it's a run through esoterically, just like the other books. Uh, one of the things I really loved about this book, though, is she talks about some of the things that, that we talked about in Living the Tarot, you know, how on a mundane day-to-day -day level, these cards express themselves as you spiritually develop kind of a thing. So it's a, it's a really fascinating wonderful book. Uh, another one I did want to mention here real quick too is The Gnostic Tarot by Lee Irwin. Now this book is much more like a standard classic tarot book in that it talks about, uh, you know, it goes through the history, it goes through, I don't think it actually goes through picking out your first deck, but you know, a book like that that sort of go covers everything uh, but doesn't get into much detail necessarily which are great. Those books are great. We all need an intro. Uh, but this book does that, but it, it comes at things from a bit more of a Gnostic perspective. Um, so it, it cuts, cuts right to the spiritual core in, in a lot of ways, talking about all these things. Uh, there is definitely pages devoted to each card. You know, you go through all the majors and you go through all the minors. There's wonderful divinatory explanations for all these things from a Gnostic, esoteric, you know, place. Uh, the decks that illustrate the book are kind of interesting. It's the Rider-Waite-Smith and the Ravenswood Tarot, I think. Kind of random. I'm trying to find a picture in here and of course I can't. Uh, yeah, this is cool. Here's one. So that shows... You see that you have the Rider Waite Smith Empress and the Rider uh, the Empress from the Ravenswood Tarot, uh, and can you see that it says Waits or Ravenswood Tarot talks about the image there Wait Tarot, um, and it goes through the upright, it goes through the reversed meanings, and it goes there's even a separate section for a Gnostic interpretation, and that's after pages and pages and pages of discussion of the Empress. Uh, on, a, on a deeper level from, from a Gnostic perspective. Uh, and it doesn't get too down and dirty. It's, it's not hard to understand. Uh, there's lots of spreads at the back, uh, but I did want to mention it here. Uh, the full title actually is Gnostic Tarot, Mandalas for Spiritual Transformation. Uh, so it's a, it's a cool book in that it focuses on spiritual evolution and personal development, uh, you know, at, while using the tarot, you know, as a deck, you know, you use the tarot for spiritual development and evolution. Uh, anyway, you know, just by studying it and, and looking at it and 
becoming it and understanding what it is. It can be a tool in your spiritual practice. I know it is for me. Uh, and that has nothing to do with reading cards for someone. Uh, but that's what this book focuses on more. Uh, so it's, it's another good one. And lastly, real quick, there are two books that you might be surprised that I didn't necessarily mention here, and that is only because they come at things from much more of a historic kind of a perspective. Uh, one is The Esoteric Tarot by Ronald Decker. I love this book. It's a wonderful book. Uh, it talks about a lot of esoteric concepts, uh, but it's, it's a bit more academic in its nature. It might not be for everybody. Uh, it's certainly... Uh, fantastic book though and I would still highly recommend it. The other one that actually is a bit more easily accessible is uh, Paul Hewson's The Mystic, The Mystical Origins of the Tarot. And here is that book on my tablet. It's subtitle reading from ancient roots to modern usage. So again this deck, uh, this deck, <laughs> I keep saying this deck, this book covers uh, tarot from a historic perspective. Uh, again, though, it's talking about esoteric concepts, mythological things. Uh, it does go through meanings of the cards and, and divination and all that good stuff. Uh, one of the things, actually, that I love the most about Paul Hewson's book here is he, for, for each and every card, he lists uh, a Tella's meaning, Mather's meaning, uh, a Golden Dawn meaning, and, and like a Rider Waite meaning. Uh, and his suggested suggested interpretation, but it's really cool to have all those things listed there, so you can very easily compare and contrast while you look at the imagery of a Marseille card and the Rider Waite card, or whatever he's got up here. Yeah, Marseille and Rider Waite. This book was actually also Paul Houston's inspiration to create uh, his own deck, uh, Dame Fortune's Wheel Tarot, which is a wonderful, amazing deck. <laughs> Sorry, I just get sucked into reading it again. God, you can just read all these books over and over. He was talking about the the Vavi Tarot, uh, and it's the the Hellmouth Tower card on there. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> I just want to read all my books now. Okay, I think I am done. Is that all the books I wanted to share with you guys? My favorite esoteric tarot books. Yes, <laughs> that is it. You know, there's lots more books on this subject, of course, and there's, it's even something that's included in almost every single book on the tarot, um, that there, there are these, that there is a, a deeper meaning, a deeper understanding at play here in our traditional tarot cards. Uh, and uh, these books just take a real good, closer look at that, that journey that's, that's being made here. Um, Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Mwah. I love you. I'll see you real soon. Bye.